This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and you're listening to Python's Paradise, your film and music show. And this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And I have my third guest from the movie Postal on here today. Please welcome the wonderful, the lovely, the talented Jackie Tone. How you doing, Jackie? Great. Go on with more adjectives. That felt right. There you go. Um, I'm going to try to stay with you here. My my headphones, I, I can only hear out of one ear. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't know what happened here, but um, I, I can hear you, though. To my left ear, I can hear you. Um, yeah, uh, last year uh, in September, I had U- Uvi Bowl on here, and I remember he was doing that uh, Kickstarter thing. Remember he was on there and he, he uh, went off on the Kickstarter thing? Oh, yeah. what was he? Um, Uva, what was he? What was he? Uh, what was he promoting for the Kickstarter? What was he crowdsourcing? I think it was, if I remember correctly, the next Rampage movie. I think Rampage 3 or something like that. Oh, man. I don't know what he's up to. He's awesome. I think so, too. And a lot of people misunderstood him, too. And I remember when he did that, uh, a lot of people were mocking him and making fun of him. And I was kind of like... Uh... There's a fun thing about Uva where, like, he is sort of smarter and ahead of the joke and ahead of the curve. So when people make fun of him, I don't feel bad for him because, first of all, he doesn't care. No. And second of all, um, he... Like, when he was doing Postal, he knew the joke of it. He was in on the joke. He knew that it was going to be incendiary. He knew that it was going to fire people up, and some people were going to think it was campy. Like, so it's not like when people rip on it, it's like, oh, whatever. He knew what he was making. It's not like he's surprised by the backlash. He he knows what, what you know what I mean? He's, um, I, he's not a Ph.D. in literature. He's, he's some amazing degree. He's either, like has double masters in, in English literature, and obviously and English is his second language at best. I mean, he's a brilliant dude. He's just a little baddie. Well, you know what? I, I was able to relate to him because I remember, like, he was looking for some support and some crowdfunding, and uh, I remember he was lashing out about the fact that people will go see something that Hollywood pretty much tells them to go see. And um, I remember I was trying to help. Um, remember the Ice Bucket Challenge? Yeah, I I was trying to help when Robin Williams passed away. I there was a campaign come up called Doubtfire Face, where you take a pie in the face for uh, suicide and suicide prevention and depression. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, and I tried to do one of those campaigns, and I um, did a video, but I asked. Uh, I come from a Christian household, so whenever I have a Christian journalist in Los Angeles tell me that I'd have to nominate her before she did it. Well, I did this video up, nominated her, and nominated a bunch of uh, performers that or celebrities that she had even interviewed uh, many of. And she turns around, she goes, great video, but I'm not taking a pie in the face, but great video, hope this catches on. And man, I, the, I found out that day that her and the organization she uh, works for, they are they use Christianity for profit. And eventually I'm going to expose them, but I'm going to try to do it in a way that's legal. But I thought of that, wow. yeah, I thought of that when Uwe Boll went off there. I, I was like, I, I kind of get it. Right. Yeah. So uh, I recently restarted the Doubtfire thing again, redid it, and uh, I nominated some of the people that I'd interviewed, and I got, I actually had some success. I had some uh, some of the uh, people I interviewed actually did a video, take a pie in the face, in the support of uh, suicide uh, prevention and depression. And um, I was like... Well, that's great. Yeah. But, um, you know, a lot of people like Ubi Bull would be, you know, challenging these people to boxing matches. And the same organization that uh, pulled that stunt on me, I noticed they had reviewed one of their one of Ubi Bull's movies. And they, they threw in this line of, they panned his movie and they threw in this line of, 
you know, this is a nice guy, blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting there thinking, you ass kissers, you guys just don't want him to knock you out in the ring. But it, tur- <laughs> it turns out that Uwe was only challenging people who panned his movies without seeing them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought he was challenging anyone who seen them. Well, you know, you know what though? I had a wonderful interview with him and I've been in touch with him since and I, I think he's a great guy. And I love Postal. He is he is a, absolutely a great guy. He is from from my experience with him, he he is an exceptional dude. I mean, I, like I said, he's very intense, he's very brilliant. He's a great dude though. Yeah, and I've had Zach Ward on here back in uh, June. Had a great chat with him as well. I, I really liked him. He was in a Christmas story, and he was just a great lead for this movie, the guy that everybody's walking all over. Um, yeah, he's, he's great. I, I loved him in the Christmas story. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, too because he looks exactly the same as he did when he was little. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, so it's this funny thing where, like, a lot of kids, you don't recognize them from when they were kids. Uh, But he, like, you know, he's in his 30s and looks exactly the same. Yeah, he's right around my age, and um, I had him on there. I think I'm going to be having him on again uh, at some point because he directed a movie called Restoration. And uh, and once I see it, um, I'm going to have him on again, have a little chat with him about that, and... And um, I I, I love his views, you know, he's very outspoken and uh, love that scene in the movie where everybody's shooting up there and he's going through the, uh, all these bodies on the floor trying to find that closest numbers. (laughs) Oh, wow, yeah. (laughs) But you played the coffee shop woman and how many people can't relate to you (laughs) dealing with these annoying customers and you just fired right up and I'm like that was perfect um yeah it's uh the movie ended up being like there were parts they shot after that that were very it was weird it was the whole thing was so was so bizarre it was such a long time ago too it's like I barely and I love I mean I, I love shooting that movie it was so much fun but I barely remember I probably should have watched it before talking to you you've probably seen it way more recently than i have i mean when did it come out 2007 seven yeah i mean i haven't seen that movie in forever yeah you how, how did you get the part did you just, I just go- try it out i had an agent at the time who got me the audition and i went in these girls were, were they're called sunday bowling casting and i went in and i remember being really there was like a couch there and I was reading the script and I was reading it and Uba was there um and I remember jumping behind the couch and holding a fake gun I mean the whole thing was it was so silly and I was just like okay if I'm gonna try out for this is ridiculousness I'm gonna be as silly as it is it felt like real naked gun vibe to me, where like no level was going to be too big. So I just went with it. And I was rolling on the floor doing somersaults behind couches, and just it was it was super fun and weird. Yeah, like like, um, and you you had some uh, great castmates that you worked with in there too, like uh, uh, David uh, Foley. Um, <laughs> I, I still haven't got that image of him. Uh, you know, on the toilet, and he stands up, and there's a puddle of shit on the floor. Yeah, he, that, he's so weird. So what a weird, what a bizarre movie. I forgot about that part. Yeah, and uh, I guess in the video game originally, uh, Gary Coleman uh, was part of it, and I guess he passed away, and Uwe Bull being very innovative and uh, creative, he got brought in Vern Troyer, of course, is famous for playing Mini Me, and Vern seemed like a very uh, great choice to fill in. Yeah, yeah, Vern was Vern was lovely, such a nice guy. Yeah, did did, did you uh, did, did he ever stick that uh, pinky finger up to his mouth? Oh no, I don't think he did. I think that's one of those things too, you know, like when. 
he probably gets asked to do that all the time, and I think, and I, no, I don't think any of us ask him. Well, it beats being put in a suitcase and all around. Oh my god! <laughs> right. But yeah, I I saw Postal for the first time. Um, must have been uh, a couple months ago, and uh, I absolutely loved it. I I think uh, for all the bad reviews Ubi Bowl gets, I think this is ten times better than a majority of stuff that Michael Bay makes. You know, I think that um, it was very creative. Like it caught my attention within that first two minutes where you get the two terrorists in the plane and they're talking about virgins and how many virgins. That are supposed part to- wasn't even that part wasn't even in the script wasn't even in the movie when I, um, there were like a lot of changes. It's weird when you do a movie because like you, you read the script and you do it. And then by the time it comes out, you're like, Whoa, I didn't know about that. But you know what I mean? That was like a surprise to me. I was like, Oh, weird. Yeah. And and I, I thought the movie made a valid point on the stuff it was attacking, especially the stuff with George W. Bush. I, I, I thought that was all um, great satire. I, I think Uwe Boll is an underrated filmmaker, at least judging from this film. Huh. Yeah, people, people, uh, he's a guy people love to hate, but he's also a guy people love to love. He's very controversial. Yeah, and I like that about him, too. Like I said, um, I um, am putting all my interviews on uh, YouTube, and eventually yours is going to go up there as well. And um, I do have your permission to use, like, headshots of you to go along with the audio, huh? Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, I remember when I asked Uwe Bull that through an email. He he sent a response that said, permission granted. And I was like, I, I was really gl- glad that I interviewed him. I I. A lot of these people that make these comments that don't know who he is, you know, and they make these assumptions. I, I find him very pleasant. I, I, I'm i really happy you had the experience of working with him. Thanks. Now, I was looking over your credits. I noticed you started in The Nanny when you were younger, huh? Yeah, sure did. I'm going to tell you a little story. Back in the early 90s, I used to autograph collect. Well, I still do autograph collect, but... I, I did it through the mail because, you know, it was something, a fun pastime. And uh, I remember I wrote Nicole Tom. Uh, I don't remember what I said to her, but I remember I was trying to be funny. And I remember I got a picture of her in the mail, and up in the corner it said, Hey, weirdo. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. That's so her. Yeah, I, I forget what, I don't remember what I said. Well, at least you know, at least you know she was actually reading her fan mail. Yeah, at some point I should see if I can get her on here and see if she remembers that. But yeah, I'm, I'm. She's still, she's still gorgeous. Yeah, she's cool. I see her at auditions all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 um, I liked her in the nanny, and I, I still like her today. But I still got that picture. <laughs> I thought that was one of the funniest responses I ever got. Yeah, that's super funny. But um, going through some of your credit, like you did a movie, I never heard of this one uh, called Bad Boy. Um, you worked with Dennis Leary and Elizabeth Hurley. and uh, I, I, Yeah, when I, when I did that one, it was called Dog, D-A-W-G. Okay. The lead character, Dennis Leary, that's like what he goes by. Okay. And I guess they changed it to Bad Boy by the time they released it. Movies are such a weird... Thing because you audition like I auditioned for a huge movie the same way exact way I auditioned for a movie you never heard of like we don't know as actors we don't know what's going to happen with it yet so you're just like all right cool I'll just audition if I like the part we'll see what happens and then sort of the rest is out of your hands so a movie like that was still fun to do but yeah ultimately I don't think that many people saw it but it was on it got released at one point years after we did it. It got released, I want to say, like on Showtime. Like it got distribution through Showtime. So it ended up being on TV all the time. And like four or five years after I did it, I had a ton of people calling me being like, Do you, are, you a, are you in this movie playing a man? What is happening? And I was like, what? How do you know about that? I did that five years ago. 
what was it like working with Dennis Leary and Elizabeth Hurley? Now I'm going based on I have not seen it. So did you get you got to work with them? Yes, yes, got to work with both of them. Uh, they were cool. They were both they were both lovely people. Kept very much to themselves. And then um, when we worked together, we did our scenes together. So did Dennis Leary sing the asshole song? He did not. <laughs> Dennis Leary did not. In fact, I remember something. Yeah, no, he did. He didn't. He didn't. Gee, he should have sang that and got Liz Hurley to dance to it. That now that would have been a. Now that would have been a performance to watch. <laughs> there you go. And you, you know, yeah. <laughs> and you, you got some award shows with that. There you go. And you also have Deuces Wild. You did that with, uh, you had a bunch of interesting people, and that's Stephen Dorff, Brad Rimfel, uh, Firzu, Firzu, uh, I'm going to get her name wrong, Fairfusa Bach, and. Faruza. Yeah, and Norman Reedus, of course, is doing really well in uh, Walking Dead. Yeah, Johnny Knoxville is in that movie, too. Oh, yeah. So was James Franco. You know what's weird? That movie's crazy. So. Did that movie in like 2000. It was the first movie I ever did, and um, the cast is off the chart. The movie's cool. It's a perfectly fine movie. Um, you know, not winning any awards, but it was my first movie, James Franco's first movie, Johnny Knoxville's first movie. It was all these huge people's first movies, and um, obviously, look at those dudes now. Uh, What's crazy is Johnny hadn't even done Jackass. He and Spike Jones had like made the pilot, and someone from MTV dropped off a VHS. It was like I think in 2000. I want to say could have been a DVD. Maybe I'm aging the story, but dropped off a tape of the Jackass pilot, and he was like, "Will you watch this and tell me if you think it's funny?" And so in his trailer, we watched the Jackass pilot. And I feel like it's such a fun story. I may have been like one of the first people to ever see it. It was way before it was on TV. Well, yeah. Yeah, he uh, became famous through uh, the jackass, although I don't think he took quite the bumps that Steve-O did. <laughs> uh, he kind of did. Johnny Knoxville, I think, has like a permanent catheter. I don't think he could pee regular. He like broke his, he broke his junk like too many times. And he's like, oh, did he? Okay, I never heard of that. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow, but but yeah, um, yeah. Deuce is wild, and of course, Postal, of course, which uh, next year celebrates its uh, ten-year anniversary. And of course, well, the studios are going to be out there celebrating Titanic's twenty-year anniversary, and I think Titanic is about as overrated as they get. I'm going to celebrate Postal because you know I think <laughs> I like. It. I love that when Titanic came out. I mean, I was a kid; I was young, but I loved it so much. I remember I was so moved by it. I sat in the movie theater after it ended in my seat, weeping. I think I was probably when I was a kid, but I think it was like part of the it was like part of the culture for me and part of the experience to be that affected by it. I just sat in my seat crying, just so well, affected for Jack. Oh, I, I was I did the same thing, except I did it because of the the money I lost going to see it. <laughs> well, no, I, th I think LA Confidential should have take, b taken Best Picture that year, not Titanic. Oh man, you're like an encyclopedia. I have no idea what movie was up for greatest pic for Best Picture that year. It was up against LA Confidential, Goodwill Hunting, The Full Monty, and As Good as It Gets. And as far as I'm concerned, Titanic was the weakest one of the bunch. Now, of course, you got people that's going to say Titanic's better because it made the most money, but those other films weren't exactly flops either. Do you even just know what movies were up for the Oscar off the top of your head? Um, not all years. I know for that one for sure, because I've had debates with people over Titanic, and I was never a big fan of Titanic. Got it. Yeah. But um, last year you were in uh, a movie I didn't see, but I certainly remember the cartoon, Gem and the Holograms. Oh, Yeah. Did Gem last year. It was super fun. I got to uh, argue with Juliet Lewis, and <laughs> we got to sort of spar it out. I was a. Um, it's interesting too because you do these movies and you don't know necessarily like how much is going to make it because it's like it's a movie. It can only be so long. 
So if they let you improv and, you know, let's say I'm giving, you know, uh, giving Juliet Lewis slack, and then you see the movie, and I'm like, oh, cool, that's what they use. Um, but it was, yeah, it was really fun. I only worked, I only worked a, a couple days on that movie. But it was really fun. Well, Juliet Lewis has also got a singing career going now, you know. And she I, does. I got her. I got her CD, Tara Incandita, really good. She has been doing the rock thing for years. Well, I first saw her sing in a movie called Strange Days, and I thought she was wonderful in that. I never saw it, but yeah, she's been rocking and rolling for for years, and she could she could not be more lovely if she tried. Oh, yeah. And, um, of course, you worked with Audrey Peoples in that. I think she played Jim, if I remember correctly. She did play Jim. I actually didn't work with any of the 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 girls playing the girls in the band. I ended up, uh, I didn't work with, I, was only, I only worked with, because um, I was in a bunch of, like, uh, I was in a, excuse me, not a bunch. I was in the, like, press room scene, and the Jim and the Hologram girls weren't in those scenes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see that movie. We had it for like a week here, so I did not get to see it. But I was looking through the credits, right. like Molly Ringwald was in that? Yeah, I guess it was a quick in and out, yeah. Wow, how cool. Like, I grew up watching Molly Ringwald. I loved Sixteen Candles. I loved her, too, when I was little. Same. I probably know about as much about that movie as you do. Yeah. And I never heard of this movie either, but I wrote it down last night, Bad Roomies. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if it's as available on Netflix Canada, because I'm learning now uh, that it's like, I guess it's all different. Um, so funny, uh, I'm such a typical American where I'm like, I just assume you have what I have. It's like, Jackie, that's not how the world works. Um, so uh, we did that movie, super indie, super indie. Like, I mean, years ago already. I would say at least two years ago. And we shot it. It was great. We were really happy about it. And then we finished the movie. And then they first went to go get distribution. And so we didn't know if it would ever come out. And then it got this company, Orchard, distributed it. And they um, they put it in various places, namely Netflix. And so then a ton of people in the States started seeing it. And, um, yeah, it was great. It's another one of those where you don't know what's going to happen with it, so it's exciting when it gets distribution. Well, there's a lot of movies that are shot even here in Canada that the states don't get. We have one called Hyena Road that was shot here and didn't play anywhere in the states, and I think it was a better film than American Sniper all around. Wow. It's, it's really hard. I mean, we get we get so such limited movies from other countries, but a lot of our movies get to other countries. You uh, Probably the closest thing we have to celebrities with us is the trailer part, boys. Have you, are you familiar with them? Oh, yeah. And wasn't there, there was like some drama. What's that? Wasn't there some drama at one point? Didn't one of those guys do something weird? Oh, they all do things weird. <laughs> Ivan Reitman produced their first movie. Oh, I love Ivan Reitman. Oh, yeah. He produced their first movie, and uh, they've done three movies, and their television show has gone 11 seasons. So, uh, Oh, wow. Yeah. So I don't know how. I often ask people I interview if they're familiar with them because I'm like, I'm wondering, are they seeing uh, anything we're doing here, you know? I feel like there are a lot of Canadian actors that are famous here, but it's probably more because of the work they're doing in the States, like they moved here. Yeah. Um, I didn't know this, and I got uh, this movie home, and I watched it three times. I I saw Sisters three times in theaters. Now, it says you were, uh, according to Internet Movie Database, you were a DJ in it. I think I know where you are in it. Yeah, like when the there like this giant group of lesbians comes into the party at the beginning. Um, and one of the les the and one of the lesbians is Kate McKinnon, right? Yeah. <sighs> You know, I, I even liked I liked her in the new Ghostbusters. I think she's hysterical. Yeah, she's incredible. I haven't seen the new Ghostbusters yet. I can't wait, but she's incredible. Um, yeah, so we, like a big gang of us, um, a, uh, a lesbian softball team comes into the party, and I'm in the front, 
in my little leather jacket. I'm like, can we play some tunes? And then I go up, and, sh- and, and Tina Fey is like, oh, here we go. Get ready for some Sarah McLaughlin. I and, remember uh, you. Yeah, and then we st- I start playing Iggy Azalea. Fuck love, give me diamonds. <laughs> I, I went so and saw fun. Sisters three times. You loved it. I enjoyed it thoroughly, you know. Uh, I think it's the best thing that Tina and Amy have done since Mean Girls. Of course, Mean Girls, they weren't working right, right together because their characters were were uh, in separate subplots. But um, I, I think since Mean Girls, the best thing they've done. Really? Yeah, I um, I enjoyed it. I mean, they, they just make me laugh, you know. They just, they're so special. Did you, did you uh, get to work right with them in the movie? Like yeah. I. That movie was a crazy one because I did, I worked a long time, like three weeks or six weeks. I worked pretty much the whole, the whole movie. So I didn't have a huge part, but because I was the DJ at the party and the whole movie takes place, the whole movie takes place around the party. I'm just pretty much like there in all the party scenes. And so I was working with, um, Bobby Moynihan and Kate McKinnon and John Cena and all these rad people. Um, and so I was there for just weeks and weeks. Uh, and it was, uh, it was, that was such a cool experience. I mean, I knew I wasn't going to have a huge cart, but it just was just to be among those people. I actually uh, tried out for Kate's part. Okay. And, yeah. And uh, uh, on the tape, because they were casting out of New York and I tried out for Kate's part in L.A., put myself on tape, and I guess they liked my audition, and then, like, months later, I heard that I was, like, in the running for the role, and I was so excited, and then when I found out uh, Kate got it, they just offered me this other part without me trying out. They just said, hey, you know, we need someone to play uh, the DJ at the party. Do you think Jackie would do it? And I was like, hey, sure, I'll go and hang out with Tina and Amy for three weeks in New York, and so... That was that. You must have made an impression. Yeah, cool. I, I did something. Who knows? What, what was Tina and Amy like? Oh, they're lovely. They're like, they're incredible. They're they're Tina and Amy. They're what you think they are. Amy's sillier. Tina's more business. From what I, I mean, it wasn't like I sat and ate lunch with them every day, you know. But from working with them, they're just funny and cool and yeah. Uh, my my one of my favorite scenes with uh, with Amy was the opening scene where she thinks the guy in the street corner is a bum. That's great. That's great. <laughs> That's a great thing. Oh, and two, oh. and of course there's Eric uh, or Ike Barinholt falling on yeah. that ballerina thing. Like the pain just shoots up your body seeing that. He's so cool. I've known Ike for so long. I mean. It was like a reunion seeing him on that movie. I probably known him like ten or twelve years. Oh wow! Yeah, so it's cool. Like people's careers go in and out, you know. Like I think when I first met Ike, he had just finished Mad TV, and he was like, "Oh, you know, like the rest of us, just like trying to get a job." And then years later, he got Mindy, and then he was doing Sisters. It's just such a funny thing how it all goes up and down with actors. It's like, okay, now I'm working, now I'm not. Now I am, now I'm not. Oh. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Okay. <laughs> I thought I missed you there for a minute. Oh, I was just saying, yeah, how how we have such crazy, unstable lives. As actors, we never know what's going on. Well, Ike has done really well. Like, he was in the Neighbors movies as well. I mean, he's... Uh, yeah, he's killing. He's, he's so funny. Again, such a good dude. I wonder if I could get him on here. Hmm. That would be interesting. But, uh, what? yeah, ask him about that, that ballerina. <laughs> 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 but, uh, and of course, John Cena, like, I gotta say, between that and Trainwreck, I think John Cena. Yeah, we used to see Hulk Hogan screw up acting for years, but I think Cena actually did really, really well in those two movies. Yeah, John Cena and uh, Dwayne Johnson are both, like, actual strong men who just act really well. Yeah, that it, it was a great seeing him in that. And I noticed you've got a film coming up. 
uh, the fertile, stupid gesture. You ever go play Gilta Radner? Yes, a feudal and stupid gesture. I did. Um, it's a movie coming out uh, for Netflix, and it's based on the, I guess, rise and fall of the national lampoon, but or just the rise. And uh, yeah, I play Gilda Radner because she was uh, in Second City at the time, the uh, sketch and improv comedy troupe with Belushi and Chevy Chase and Bill Murray and Harold Ramis. Dan and um, yeah, so at the beginning of National Lampoon, they had a National Lampoon radio hour and they had live performance shows. And so they needed comics back in the 70s. This is before SNL to do, to do all their uh, comedy stuff. And so they called in this comedy troupe, which just so happens to now be in 2016, pretty much all of our comedy idols. Yeah, she was part of the original cast of Saturday Night Live as well. Yeah, absolutely. This movie takes place before that, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she, yeah, was, she was quite the comedy icon. Unfortunately, she's no longer with us, passed away, married right. uh, Gene Wilder, of all people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you, you uh, were you nervous about playing an icon like that? Uh a little bit. I think I would have been not more nervous, but just more, I don't know what the word is, but I think it would have been, whatever that feeling is, I would have had more of it had I been playing her on SNL uh, because you're familiar with all that stuff. So you're comparing my performance to, basically I'm just doing an impression of a person, right? Okay. And so you'd be more like if I was doing Rosanna Dana or anything like that, you'd okay. go, Oh, well, I don't know if that's as good or that's as good or wow, that's perfect. But the point is I was doing stuff before that. So you really don't have anything to compare it to. So basically I was just being an actor, uh, who acted, I can't even explain it, who acted like Gilda Radner. It's not like you're going to see me do her character. It's from SNL. No, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes that can work against a movie. I remember when I saw Bruce Almighty for the first time, and, of course, Jim Carrey was uh, having the power of God in him, you know. And uh, I remember he did this scene where he was driving where he was uh, imitating um, Clint Eastwood um, mm -hmm. doing uh, Go Ahead, Wait, Make My Day and stuff like that. And I'm sitting here thinking, um, you know, um, that's not what God's impression of Clint Eastwood would be. That that right there is doing an impression of a character Clint Eastwood is playing. And I, I, I saw that one flaw in Bruce Almighty that, you know, they were... Well, yeah, but and I think for, for that, I think other people probably were like, wow, what a perfect impression. And so the point is it gives the audience the chance to then judge how good or bad, I know uh, how good or bad a person is doing as opposed to just like, going into it with fresh eyes because you don't know this this version of Gilda any better than anyone else. Does that make sense? Sure. Wow, Gilda Radner. I saw that last was, night and I was like, wow, that, that must have been a treat for you to get that. Was that her a role for you to get? It was the coolest. Um, really a dream come true. So I've loved Gilda since I was a little baby kid and I used to play her greatest hit the VHS out until I don't even know if I don't think I even have it anymore in New York at my parents house because I think I just played it out and sometime in the 90s we tossed it but because uh, it was broken not because I stopped loving it and um, yeah we I loved her forever and so for the audition they said you know here's the scenes from the movie we'd like you to try and also if there's any characters of Gilda's you can do throw those in there so we can get a vibe of, like, if you're like her or not. And I already, my whole life I've been doing Emily Latella and Lisa Lupner and Rosanna Dana just for my friends, for myself, just. And so I went in there and I was like, sure, I'll do all her characters. I'll do my best. I love her. And uh, I just went in there with different car costume changes and I did the scenes from the movie and I did as many of her characters from SNL as I could do. And, I was, and then I just, you know, I think with a lot of auditions, you got to just leave it there, you know? And then I found out that I was up for it. And I was like, oh, my God. Then I found out who was playing everyone else. 
And I was like, oh my goodness, if I get this movie. And then I and then I ended up booking it. And it was absolute dream come true. And the guy that directed David Wayne okay. is a personal hero. I mean, he directed Wet Hot American Summer and he was a big uh, he was one of the creators, writer, actor of the comedy troupe Stella, which is like one of my favorite comedy troops. So just it was working it was playing one of my heroes in a movie directed by another one of my heroes, acting alongside of another pile of heroes. I mean, it was really just a joke. Did you have the crazy hair like Gilda had? I did. <laughs> That's one thing I remember about her. Do you remember when she passed away? You know, vaguely. I remember, I remember it happening, and I remember being very sad, but I was so young that I think that and maybe this isn't true for everyone, but I think that when you're young or when I was young, it, I didn't get it. Like, I just was like, oh, wow, she's not here anymore, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But at that point, she hadn't been uh, in the entertainment business for such a long time that it was weird. Like, as a fan, I was separated from her work for so many years anyway. Okay. So that when she passed away, it was it was... I don't remember. I was a kid. Yeah, I remember when Rodney Dangerfield passed away, and I was driving to work when I heard the news, and I, I felt bad. I remember being in the car hearing that news because I always liked Rodney Dangerfield, you know? So that's that's why I asked you about Gilta, because you mentioned being a big fan. So, but Oh, yeah. yeah, I was a huge fan, but I, I think... Yeah, I think I was too young. Too young, yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah. I think, too, when you're young, you try to pretend stuff doesn't ha didn't happen. Actually, with all the celebrities I've been passing away recently, um, it's, it's odd and surprising. I think the one that passed away that probably uh, got me the most choked, out, choked up was Roddy Piper passing away. The rest And that got you the most choked up. The most choked up because I was a big Piper fan, you know? I felt bad too when Randy Savage passed away as well, but um, but uh, you know we still got John Cena. And people can jeer him, but anybody that can pick the Big Show and Edge up over his shoulder, that's a lot of weight, and then drop them on that's the mat. A lot of weight. I know nothing about wrestling. Oh, Big Show is over four hundred pounds, and he picked him right up over his shoulder, and then have an Edge, which is a smaller guy, up there as well. I, I'm I'm going to tell you he he's a strong fellow, but I like what I've seen of him in Sisters and Trainwreck. Like I'm I'm quite oh, impressed. Oh yeah, I mean I I just mean to say that um, when I was little, my brother watched uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper and the Iron Sheik and Hulk Hogan, and I used to watch all that stuff with him. But as far as like current, oh the current roster is not very good. I I like the I old stuff. I don't know about things. like. Any, any of the new stuff because I remember my brother had like the wrestling ring and all and he still has all of the action figures and you you go on you go over there to your brother's place and you guys uh, do a royal rumble with the wrestlers oh yes in my 30s <laughs> I'm playing with tons of wrestling figures it is it's it's constant. I can barely go about my day. I'm just constantly playing with action figures. You can invite Erka, Ika Varenhold over, and I bet you he'd have fun with that, too. Yes, me, and I'll let him know. <laughs> you know what? Um, we're closing in on my time because I don't want to make you miss your appointment, uh, but I was going to bring a couple things up, though, before you go. I, I mentioned the Doubtfire Face uh, Challenge before. I wonder if you'd be willing to, do, uh, to try that. I am not sure. I mean, per, perhaps I'd love to raise uh, awareness in any way I can. Uh, maybe send me send me more details about it, about where it's posted and what goes on with it all, before so I know what's going on before sure. I throw a pie in my face. Yeah, well, Lisa Langwas, who's a Canadian actress, she accepted the challenge. And um, Deborah Shelton, who is a... a uh, Miss USA, uh, she's up for it, and I had some others as well. Because um, uh, I find that uh, depression is something that gets raked over so badly. It's just not taken seriously. So, and it was such a sad thing when we lost Robin Williams. And, uh, you know, so 
And I've struggled with depression through most of my life. Not suicide, mind you, but it's kind of a chemical imbalance. But, yeah, I can send you an email and uh, give you the details sure. on it. Yeah. And um, second thing I need to ask is, um, could I possibly get an autographed picture? Oh, absolutely. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I loved you in Postal. I think that that's such an underrated movie, and it celebrates 10 years next year. I say forget Titanic and it's 20 years. Let's celebrate Postal's 10 years. Right? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's celebrate Postal's 10 years. And rather than... Get, rather than get Uba on the phone. Yeah. We might have to go to Germany to celebrate it because people love that movie in Germany. Oh, well, I love it here, you know, and I'm honored that, uh, you know, he lives in Canada now, you know. Uh, very yeah, he loves Canada. Oh, yeah, you know, it, it's such an That's honor. That's where we shot, we shot the movie in Vancouver. Yeah, I know. You know, um, yeah, but I, I know that scene where you're you're getting annoyed with that guy that's ordering coffee. I've, yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen that in my own life. Yeah, that was too real for me. I'm always the person that's just like, oh, God, please stop it. Well, I had uh, Julia Chandry on here. She was the girl who, quote, unquote, made it with the hot dog and Mean Girls. And she lives in Toronto. And she, she used to work at Tim Hortons in Toronto. And I, I don't know. I'm wondering if she ever had experiences where she had annoying customers, you know. <laughs> You'll have to ask her. I might have to do that. But, yeah, I'll have to send you uh, my address or something or whatever for uh, an email so to do the uh, the autograph thing. Yeah, by all means. By all yeah. means, do that. It was lovely talking to you. Um, before I let you go, would you please do a, 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 a plug for my show? Sure. Yeah, just, just state your name and uh, say you're listening to... Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert in Fredericton, New Brunswick. Oh, uh, I don't know if I'll remember it through Fredericton, New Brunswick. Okay, um, just just say uh, your name and uh, say you're listening to Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert. You got it. Sure. Hey, this is Jackie Tone, and you're listening to Python's Paradise with Greg Gilbert. Oh, that was wonderful. Jackie Tone, thank you so much for coming on and blessing me with your talent and your your beauty, of course. You're a lovely woman. Thank you so much. It was nice talking to you. We'll talk to you soon. Yes, I'll keep in touch, okay? All right, see you later. God bless you. Bye. Yep, bye.